this is, gosh, I think this is your fourth. Because wow. we're on the second contract. No, okay. yeah. So you guys have two audit reports like normal. Um, the one audit report is just on the business funds, so we're going to focus on the one that's on the whole government. So it will be titled Primary Government Financial Statements. I'm not sure what order you're throwing in. Um, can I go through this quickly like normal? That would be KVAC Financials. Yes. So if you have any questions, just stop me as we go. Um, on page one, two, and three is our independent auditor's report. And specifically on page two uh, is where we issue our opinion. The second paragraph down is an adverse opinion on GAAP, and that's because we are doing it on KMAC or a regulatory basis. So the third paragraph down is where we're issuing our unmodified opinion on regulatory basis, which is following KMAC, cash basis, so the accounts payable and encumbrances, and we are issuing you a clean opinion we don't believe there are any material misstatements within the financials. So that's the highest opinion you can receive. And then you turn to page four. That's the actual financial statement that we're issuing the opinion on. It's a um, pooled or collected statement of all your funds. At the end of the year, you ended with unencumbered cash of 8.8 .8 million compared to last year of 8.7 million. Um, just kind of briefly looking at the funds in overall, you didn't put any money um, specifically, or you didn't grow in your capital equipment reserves and capital improvement reserve funds, but your utility reserve funds went up about 262000 So you were able to transfer some money into those funds this year. Was that in part due to the, um, the stormwater? The stormwater is a new fund on there. It's its own fund. It's, it's called its stormwater own utility. Um, what went in went out, though, for the most part. And the, the transfers are transfer from like electric fund, water fund, uh, uh, solid waste, uh, wastewater, where we have scheduled transfers from um, those funds into a dedicated reserve fund for those parent funds, I guess is the way to put it. And then the only, um, we do have a couple of project funds still on there for Garfield State, um, just determining what that money is going to be spent on. So 113000 of that is those bond proceeds that have to be spent specifically on another project. So those are another reserve as well. Any questions on that financial? There are detailed financial statements in the back for each one of those funds. I won't go through each of the funds, but um, if you want more detail, there are statements in the back. So then if you keep turning, these are the footnotes to the financial statements. KMAN didn't have any big changes this year, um, relatively the same to last year. We didn't have any compliance issues. Um, all the Kansas statutes that we reviewed, there were no compliance issues. So if you kind of turn to page nine, the only thing I want to point out is this is where your transfers are. So as he was explaining, you can see um, the, the transfers you did to the reserve funds. But also there is a litigation footnote on there, and that is new this year. We did have to note that um, the ambulance issue is still outstanding, uh, but we did not go into detail on that. It's just a general public statement that we had to put in there. And then if you turn on the page 15, this is your debt schedule as of 12:31. So you ended the year with a uh, principal ending balance of 7.7 million. You're expected to pay that off in 2047, and you paid interest of 257,000. And this is your summary of expenditures, actual to budget. At the end 
on page two, which is in our independent auditor's report, just to explain the summary of opinions because it's kind of confusing. Um, we do qualify the opinion on this one, and it, the reason being is you are required to get an actuarial on your health insurance and post employment benefits, which is very costly. Um, and, and for the use of it, it, it's not determined to be necessary for this financial statement. So we do qualify the opinion since you do not get that actuarial done. It's basically an implicit benefit that's given, that's um, generated by allowing retirees on your health insurance. And so um, you will see that it's qualified, but it's only qualified for that purpose. And just to give you an idea, I did look into what it would cost to have an actuarial do that calculation, and it was over $7,000. Mm -hmm. So the cost of that actuarial study and claim, I didn't think was justified. I'd rather have the, or the, I'd rather have the uh, qualified opinion on the audit than expend $7,000 a year for an actuarial number. What would the purpose of uh, actuarial study be? It puts a liability basically on your books that that um, says what you are liable for in the future okay. should your retiree use your, your COBRA, basically. Right. Honestly, not probably, especially since you're only doing it on the, the business funds. I, I agree with them and don't think the cost is beneficial on this issue, especially since you're also doing the other audit. So. And I don't, I think you use these for the bonds, and I don't think the bond companies have ever said anything no, about that being in there. So. Don't worry about the, more about the uh, covenant, ratio coverage. <laughs> yep. So I won't go into detail on this financial statement unless you guys have questions on it. Like I said, it only is specific to your business funds, and it is an actual um, balance sheet and income statement, probably more similar to what you guys are used to if you own a business. Um, at the end of the year, you did have total net position of $17 million in those business funds. And your income, basically, net income is $344,000. Any questions on that one, or do you want me to go into further detail? And the only other things we have are our two uh, letters for management recommendations. We had a really good year. Um, we only have a couple recommendations left to clean up, and um, they're already being worked on, so I expect they will be adjusted next year. Um, I'll just start with the governance letter, which should say governance letter at the top. And these are just general recommendations for internal controls that we have. Um, bank reconciliations are being completed. They just aren't being signed off for review. Um, I think they are being reviewed now, but I just don't have the sign off, so we just recommend showing that sign off. Um, the person that is preparing the AP checks are also stuffing the envelopes and mailing them. Just for an out of control, there's enough people that we could split that up, and so we just recommend having someone else do that. And then signature stamps, we don't really like signature stamps. <laughs> we prefer not to have them, but if you have to have them, really the person that owns that signature stamp is supposed to keep it, and they're supposed to be the ones using it. Um, so we just recommend those be kept by the owner and, and locked up when not in use. And then the last comment on the last page is just a GASBY update, and this will only affect the gap audited financial statement. There is a new standard coming out that is going to require all operating leases to be um, approved or picked up on the debt schedule. So that's different than what it has been in the past. And so we just recommend them looking at the ones that affect the business funds and evaluating that as it goes into effect next year. And then the other letter is our management letter. These are the recommendations that we are basically um, put the preference a little bit higher to get a, a fix. We have a material weakness still on journal entries. The city, just the way their system is set up, they do a lot of journal entries. All of the revenue is done, not all, a lot of the revenue is done through a journal entry instead of the cashiering system. So we just recommend that we get better controls in place. Someone's monitoring those um, and reviewing them as they're being done. Larry does all 
reconciliations. I'm reviewing the journal entries and signing off on them now. And he's also providing more documentation with the journal entries. Yes. So if that's the case, if that's happening, we'll have to leave. That, well, yes, yes. And we talked about before you even left here on how they did with adding his position, how they can get the Is there some kind of a policy or procedure in place for the use of the signature stamps? Like, are they locked up, or is there a dollar amount that a signature stamp can't be used for at above a certain dollar level? You well, the the see, I can answer that. Um, basically, the signature stamps are used for um, checks. Well, we don't need to. I mean, we're automatic ACH on on uh, payroll. Sorry, Siri, I didn't talk to you. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the purchase order ordinance, which you're approving tonight, that's when we use them. Uh, we essentially, most of the time, only run checks twice, and that's after the pay purchase order ordinances have been approved. So that's when we use the signature stamps. And we use the signature stamps because one, we try to ensure we have one original signature, but three signatures, and it's not always um, <coughs> easy to get three signatures on it. So, it yeah. but, it, but it is off of a, an approved purchase order. It's not just running a, uh, checks and doing it. My question was more for the listening public than myself, so thank you. Zola Trace Series monitors from Zola Medical Corporation. 
in the amount of $61,600.79 with $20,000 paid out this year by the city with a three-year lease to buy agreement with U.S. Bank. Have a motion. Is there a second? Second. <coughs> this, this means we pay $20,000 each of the three years? Uh, it would be around sixteen five for the, the, the two years coming up. Two, two years after that. Okay, so um, a local bank, Farmers Bank, also um, made an offer with interest that was lower at 36 months. But there's not, so the reason you chose U.S. Bank is because well, the, the, the Farmers Bank actually was going to cost us a little bit more money, uh, so not a lot, almost four or five hundred dollars. But then there's a five hundred dollar payout to purchase the item with Farmers Bank, and it's only a dollar payout with U.S. Bank. So there was a total of like nine hundred dollars difference then. Yes. that other than $900 
uh, that got in the way. Other, I mean, the same thing happens. You can still you still own them after three years. And I'm not opposed to using farmers back. Okay. Just clarify for me. At the end of the lease with farmers, there's an additional five hundred dollar payment. That's correct. Because there's five hundred dollars due at closing, which increases your actual interest cost. Um, and if there's an additional 500 after that, which is not in any of the calculations here, and you're looking at a $1,400 difference, not a $900 Thank difference. Thank you for the clarification. So there's two $500 payments? One is basically, if you want to call it an origination fee for a lease, which when you calculate true interest costs would be calculated in the cost of the lease. Um, and then if the buyout is $500, which doesn't show on here, then that would have to be added into the total cost difference. So $1,400 difference. And then let me see if I can find one. Something you need to do to the Because if it, if it does fall within the guidelines of the preferred local vendor, to approve 
$1,750 um, to the to approve the installation of a one intercom latch system to the safety center through Salina Lockdown. And is there a second? Second. Questions? What happens if that front desk is unattended then? Well, we're talking about the old safety center, right? I mean, mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, please. Thank you, please. Okay. Do they have to? Do you have to do anything to the inside door? Like reinforce it in any way or anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, we look at you know, we look at several different things like bulletproof glass mm -hmm. and different things to make it more secure, but it's just bulletproof glass is very expensive. Um, so this is we're just kind of going steps. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I think eventually, as you come in, there's a wall with a window that, uh, that you can see into uh, the administrative assistance office. We'd like to replace that window at some time with a, a slide area with uh, perhaps an area that they can talk so that you could actually talk to someone uh, there and maybe perhaps take care of some business there then. so that we can come all the way to so it's just kind of steps, but that, that's kind of the direction we want. So when putting in the um, uh, the intercom latch system, so there is voice there, so someone else could hear in the building or can only be heard at that front desk? I don't know if I can say a knock on that class door, but... Uh, in a, in, if there's no, okay, yeah. all right. It just it's called to approve the installation of a intercom latch system. To me, that meant voice. Voice, yeah. So there's not voice. I don't believe so. No. Okay. So if someone comes and she's away from the desk, there isn't anybody to say, "Just a moment, I'll be with you." That's correct. Okay. Is that satisfactory? Steps. It's all in steps. Okay. You're great. You're great. <laughs> You're mad a few words, aren't you, Chief? Yeah. Okay. Well, Chief, I understand there's probably some technicality of some things here that it's hard to know what all you're getting. I, what I see, and I'm fairly familiar with these systems, it shows a comlet system, which I'm, again, somewhat familiar with. It shows a door station, which would be normal and then a desk station. So I think there is an intercom call button at the door, and it will ring to a uh, attendant station where there'll be uh, a, an intercom. You can get video with that too, but it's this it specifies no video. there's no video included. So it'll just strictly be voice. Oh, so I think is, it okay. should be able to, I think, based on these model numbers that I'm seeing, be able to talk back and forth, and if they determine to let me in, hit a button. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it takes a village. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chief, does she have issues now where people just walk in? And We've had our moments, yeah. Is there any type of panic button at, the, at her workstation there? She has a radio mic. So that's all she has there. I know we have panic buttons here. 
worth a look at. So no. Any further questions? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Thank you. 
difference between um, the local bid and the low bid can be no greater than $2,000. So um, in this particular instance, Farm State Bank would be within both of those parameters on their please offer. I'd like to, oh, so now we have to vote on the motion that was on the table, which would be to Yes, so you can have that motion to. I can amend it. Okay. okay. Um, I would like to amend my original motion to go with um, the recommendation to go to go with the motion to accept the offer from U.S. Bank and um, accept the offer from Farmer State Bank of of Lindsborg. Where did I say?
Police Department um, do this process just simply because of the fact that pyrotechnics, I'm sure, will receive a lot of calls and questions. If PD is doing it, they may may not receive as many calls and questions about it. Uh, it looks more official to me that way if they're doing it. Uh, and I think they, they are more willing to do it as well. So Cost-wise? Uh, um, the the um, pistol and cartridges I've looked at, um, 50 cartridges and a, a pistol for less than $200. Um, that's not to say that <coughs> there might still be some need to try and incorporate a few other items, but what I've looked at is still relatively inexpensive to what I'm thinking now. They're, they're more reflective devices to try and create that disturbance, that visual disturbance. Um, uh, I think I've talked about the car lock man and that type of stuff before. But there's so much wind up there that it's what I have put up there before doesn't last long because of the wind. So um, that's trying to find a device that would hold up to that. And then uh, public notification. <laughs> yeah, we would write uh, something up in um, on the Facebook page and, and address that. Um, and probably uh, it would be later on for the next newsletter article we would write up following just to more thoroughly explain um, the necessity <coughs> for this. So this is also the <coughs> one to make all of you aware of also the first step in the notification process to the general public. I, I know that there are going to be a, a percentage of uh, residents that are not going to be happy with this news. Um, I think understanding what we invest in maintaining um, a clean and safe water tower is also significant. How do you think some of the naysayers, if they had these roosting on the top of their home, wouldn't find them as amusing? No. Because uh, I agree that they're just kind of nasty critters. If, if you could see what the tower looks like up on top, it, it's, it's disgusting. It's really bad. And to think that within a matter of quarter of an inch is where our fresh drinking water is at. Um, it's, it's bad. And you don't have anyone in your staff or the police department who could stay up there? <laughs> <laughs> I've spent my fair amount of time up there, but I keep getting called from Greg and tell me I've got other work that I need to be doing. So <laughs> I, I try and see every much as possible. Yeah. Do you have some images that could be shared? Yes, I, I, when I get back up there, I will get you some fresh images. Okay. 